Okay, welcome to another episode and today we're gonna play the granddaddy of all racing games <laughs> or at least for arcade racing games uh, Daytona USA absolutely incredible if you are an arcade gamer I don't even have to explain this to you how awesome this game is and to this day <laughs> I still think this is the best indie racing game hands down now there's definitely Daytona 2 uh, there was also Daytona 3 if I remember correctly um, But Daytona 1 at least for me This is really the one I always think about when I think of a Daytona game Because it was so revolutionary at the time Everything from the graphics the sound the sheer sense of speed and the total number of cars on the screen was Something that we've never seen before up to this point and you Suzuki and team just well, of course knocked it out of the park Look at this game 60 frames per second crazy sense of speed and just wildly fun and whenever you play these arcades and then it was linked up with other Daytona cabinets wow the experience like no other and as you can see there's multiple camera angles and prior to this Sega was experimenting with polygon racing game and the first one that really utilized this for a racing game was virtual racing and of course we have virtual fighter as well and those were on the Model 1 board. This game was on the Model 2 board. And Virtual Fighter 2 was also on the Model 2 board. And so the ones that started all had some amazing sequels. And just look at this. And there's Sonic right there. Oh man, let's do this. And I just could not believe how fast this game is. It's fast and chaotic. Now some people would like this overhead view. Uh, I mean, it does give you a more sense of scale. And then for some people, you know, they like this because it seems very realistic. You know, there's also damage as well. And then some just like this one, you know. I, like many other people, like this view. You know, you get the whole feel of being behind the racer, but at the same time, you can still see what's going on. And I'm like, wow, 21, 22 out of 40. I love this game. And the announcer, the music, top notch. I mean, Daytona, the, the song Daytona. Yeah, you can't get away from that. Oh, and a rolling start. And even though I absolutely enjoyed the Daytona games that followed afterwards, there was just something about this one, you know, that is really hard to replicate in terms of like how you felt when you first saw this and played it. And I really did enjoy Daytona 2 and Daytona 3, if, I can't remember if there was a Daytona 3, but Daytona 2 was definitely incredible as well. Actually, I love all the Daytona games. Is that it? Yeah, number 19th. Let's see if I can go on to another stage. Wow. Game over. All right, let's try a different stage. Let's try the advanced stage. Four laps. And I like the fact that you can choose the stage that you want. Because <laughs> uh, Sega's other games, you know, you actually have to pass the stage to go to the next one. Now this one was very scenic when it comes to this, the graphics on it. All right, let's go. Oh yeah, there's that Daytona soundtrack. Love it. Oh man. Oh, this one's wild. Okay. And of course, you know, with most Sega arcade games, or most arcade racing games, you're always fighting time along with the competitors. Look at this. This just looks so incredible. And you know, whenever this was ported to the Sega Saturn, it just did not look good at all. I was so disappointed and of course I didn't expect you know this powerful game to be ported to a home machine perfectly you know but boy it just looked really bad especially compared to Rich Racer on the first PlayStation there's a world of difference and although they did try to improve this uh, with another version of Daytona oh wow that was not great it still didn't look anywhere near like the arcade whereas Virtual Fighter 2 uh, you know, Sega did an amazing job of porting that. It was pretty much near arcade perfect in most cases. 
but Daytona it didn't really ever get like a near arcade perfect version until like the Sega Dreamcast which didn't have the original but they did have the sequel and really the best version as far as I remember was the Xbox version of Daytona USA that was yeah that was arcade perfect and then some I think it ran at a higher resolution and you know at the time this was running at 60 frames per second just silky smooth let me get the reflections on this oh wow all right let's try this since i'm gonna <laughs> i'm probably not gonna qualify in this one as well boy that sense of speed is just nuts for professional virtual business locations check out anytime mailbox with more than 1300 locations worldwide at affordable rates for more information check out the affiliate link in the description area below and i really enjoyed the music so much that i did want to buy the soundtrack at the time but they didn't sell it at stores i would have had to import oh no oh come on almost there all right and honestly this was my favorite stage out of the three now the city stage is definitely the most difficult but this one just has it all. Come on. Oh man, almost there. All right, let's try the advanced stage. And then for uh, Daytona USA 2 or Daytona 2, you could actually select different cars. And I thought you could select different cars here as well. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna select a different car, I'll just play it. Let's do this. Start your engines. Love that. Yeah. Let's go. Oh man. And this one's, I guess it's kind of supposed to be San Francisco because of this bridge. It's not exactly the Golden Gate, but it gets pretty close. Look at that. Well, I don't do well in that view. Let's look at this overhead. See if it improves my time any. Now this one has a lot of sharp turns. Oh, like that one. <laughs> well, at least I got the time extension. Yeah, there's a reason why this is the expert level because the turns are really difficult. And um, I tried playing this in a manual instead of automatic. Well, yeah, it's just really difficult. I'm definitely not a Daytona expert there. There's Jeffrey from Virtual Fighter right there. Nice touch cross promoting <laughs> oh man this level is so dense with city oh yeah this one's my least favorite stage because you know there's so many times you're gonna hit a wall and that stops your whole sensation of speed you know like the oh great like the first stage had the best sensation of speed because it's just basically going around a circular track you know and the second one had the most variety there's the horse and so on the Sega Saturn version, uh, you can unlock a mode where your horse becomes your car, which is pretty funny. All right, at least I made it to the checkpoint. And I think there was a shortcut as well if you just ran through those signs. But I can't remember. Maybe I should try to keep, make it around another checkpoint. Oh, and you can see there's damage right there. You know, at the, time, at the time, it was something a little bit different, you know, that you could actually get damage on the cars because a lot of times these companies, you know, if they have an like, actual car name on there, the brand didn't want their cars to be damaged, you know. Nowadays, that's kind of normal for the cars to be damaged. Because back then, they just wanted to look perfect. And boy, yeah, having this damage does affect your performance. And there are pit stops, but who uses them? <laughs> Just slows you down. All right, can I make it? No, nah, probably not. You place All right. Eight. So I'm gonna play the first stage one more time. You know, um, it's just fun. <laughs> and just going around a circle. Maybe I could get a a better uh, a better spot. Let me see. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, I love this rolling start yeah god I'd never get sick of this look at this it's crazy <laughs> all right let's go 
Oh yeah. I'm not a big fan of watching NASCAR and Daytona and stuff like that, but whenever uh, you know Daytona USA came out, well, I definitely started watching more of it because <laughs> I wanted to get that whole sense of speed. And this one, wow, this the sense of speed here is still incredible. It still is. All right. Oh yeah. So hopefully I can get a better position. Last time I had 22. And at the time, you know, like for a game to have 40 plus cars on the screen, that was really nuts. That was a lot of power that was needed and boy the Sega Model 2 and the programming team at AIM2 definitely delivered here. Come on. Alright, so two more spots and I'll get to what I had before. Oh no! Oh that's my first crash. Well they crashed too so I think I'll be able to beat it. Let's get a little bit closer to the action. Okay. Come on, two more spots. I could at least beat 22. Let's do this. If I could just get around those three cars, I would beat my last position. Okay, there it is. There it is. 21, yes. You gotta keep this up and not crash. And boy, it's just this sense of tension along with this. You know, you're trying to get a better spot, and at the same time, you're not trying to crash. Okay, if I could just get around all these other cars. Yeah, let's keep going. Boy, it's just a rush. And you can imagine being a kid playing this, especially on the arcade machines. Wow, with the steering wheel, the whole cockpit feel. It's incredible. Oh, man. This is another game. Honestly, I wish all Sega arcade games were remade in the modern times using modern hardware. I was going to say this game would be great as remake. I'd say any Sega arcade game. Just remake it. And I can't imagine Daytona with all the new hardware, graphics card. Wow. If that ever comes out, I am buying it for sure. Let's see if I can get into the top 10 on this. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Got it. Go, yeah. Place 13th. Yeah. 13th through versus 22. That's not bad at all. I'll take that. Now, Woo! That was fun. Yes. <laughs> so that is Daytona USA. One of the best, if not the best. <laughs> Daytona game <laughs> out there. There's been others that tried, but besides Sega's other sequels to this, there's never been better games since then. So if you actually had any thoughts on this game or any other games that you enjoyed at the arcades, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more ret my and if you did want to see more of my retro arcade game reviews, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area below. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on another episode.